Hi, my friend. I'm happy to note that you understood the basic principles of this mind and you are progressing and evolving. My master used to say, O oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. What will pass? Mind cannot keep anything forever condition if I don't want. But if I want, then the mind will trigger the same impression again and again. So why my master says, O oh mind, be at peace, this will also pass for the sake of the real self, for making the entire life a celebration. Nothing remains in the mind forever. Only what is permanent remains forever, which is real self. And this real self is a permanent, is permanent peace, love, truth and wisdom. Real self cannot be undone because mind works because of the real self. So any time mind goes in a wrong direction, close your eyes and repeat the words of my master, O oh mind, be at peace, this will also pass. Keep watching those thoughts and feeling and the sensations. They will come, they will go. They have come for going. They have only come for leaving. But when I am attracted by like or dislike, then they make a home to the mind. How mind causes the problem in the peace? That is what we understood in the previous uh, talk. Let us understand what is this suffering or I can say how suffering enters the mind and the body. First thing when we are not aware. You know, when you are not aware, then only you become angry. Can you become angry when you are aware? So when we are not aware, we are thinking of the past. Not we. The mind is thinking of the past. The mind finds the thought that is causing the pain, grief or pleasure. We are not aware. Now see, I said that we are not aware, but the mind at a lower level, at the subconscious level, is recording everything. I am in a lot of stress. Mind is recording. I had an event 20 years ago. I cannot get rid of it. Mind is recording. I am in anxiety, mind is recording. I want pleasure from this object, mind is recording. And I am not aware. A thought of the pain, mind is recording. A thought of the grief, the mind is recording. That I retrieve the past, mind is still recording. I am crying, mind is recording. So what will happen? It is recording and it is accumulating all the impressions in my mind. So I'm responsible, I'm accumulating all these impressions in my mind. So what will happen? These impressions are like a saving account. And now the mind has a liberty to break that saving fixed deposit and it triggers one impression. Mind goes to that thought of the grief in the past and then we fall into problem. But, but, when the mind moves within, deep inside the heart, 
leaving all the thoughts of the desire, despair, despair, division, duality and delusion, what happens then? Because now your mind is moving inside, the way you drive home, you leave all the houses except yours. You park the car in the garage and you enter into your home. Mind says, I'm already in peace. Moving the mind within, deep inside the heart, leaving all the thoughts of desire, despair, division, duality, delusion, past, is the journey, that's what we are doing. We discover inner calm, peace and peace. You have done it. One hundred times you have entered into that state. But why those thoughts return? Because I have recorded it again and again and again. One hour of meditation every day, 23 hours of subconscious recording. Are you getting it? My mind, my master says, oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. Thought comes, let it come. Now I will not give fuel to that thought. We are not indulging the mind in any thought that causes, that may cause the suffering, but it is happening to me. I know you will ask me the same question. No doubt. I'm aware of that. So the next question comes, you know, they come until I reach to the higher meditative state. What should I do? Did I create a right question? What should I do until I, no, I'm committed to practice. I am doing regular practice, but what should I do until I reach to the higher state where these recordings are totally erased? So our master says, my master says, engage the mind in sattvic thought, speech and action. What is sattvic? So the sattvic, there are three qualities of a mind. One is sattvic, other is rajasic, and third is tamasic. So what is the sattvic mind? It is looking for knowledge. It is looking for happiness. It is looking for joy. It wants to live into the joy based on the right knowledge. What should we do? until we reach to the higher state of meditation. Listen to the talk, the, especially the last one, and before that, listening and learning again and again until mind naturally moves within. Listening, learning, reflecting the practice again, and doing the practice again and again. The moment the mind returns to any kind of the thought, you switch on, listen to this, close your eyes, and then Master says, O oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. Keep that thought in the mind while listening and learning and see what happens. You will hasten the progress. So once you have done it and now the mind feels little calmness, then what should we? You are living at a higher level of awareness. You have left the unconscious, habitual, instinctive movement of the mind that is returning to the old thought and event. Then ask the question, what I am doing, why I am doing this activity, why the mind is returning to that thought causes the feeling. Is it out of boredom? Past thoughts are coming. Is it because of the boredom? Is it coming because I have some other ambition? It is because there is some hidden purpose? Ask yourself. Hammer the mind. Put up this question. And you will see 
the mind further raises its awareness and that thought disappears. But it has not yet done. What is the effect on the five sense, or sense organs and the state of my mind when I have this thought? Is it causing dullness or excitement or crying? Does it induce a state of unconsciousness? You're asking these questions to yourself, to your mind. You're hammering the mind. Does it evoke the feeling of despair, frustration, crying? Does it evoke a feeling of a rapid pulsating heart. Does it develop immobility of the mind or excite passion? Does it bring wisdom or does it create the loss of attention and concentration? Does it, does any thought, feeling, causes the loss of memory about these principles? that the peace and happiness is my essential nature. My friend, what will happen? If you are asking these questions, what will happen? Understand it clearly. If the mind is favoring thoughts of the past, grief and suffering or any event, these thoughts are executed mechanically and habitually. You don't want any kind of a grief and pain that happened in the past. But why, the, why these thought enters into the mind? They enter uh, mechanically and habitually because of the recording I have already explained in the beginning. Seeking pleasure outside. Reminding of pain that happened in the past. Simple example. We eat food we like without paying attention that it will cause sickness. I have given that example hundreds of times. You know, I like sugar. I enjoy sugar. And I have been eating it. The time comes, it becomes habit addiction the same thing we have an addiction of the thought also and then what happens when we are diabetic then sugar is a poison come on same sugar same constituents of the sugar my mind reflects now it is a poison before it it was a pleasure we become angry in the spell of a second because of this habit the mind says my mood is upset because of this habit. It is mechanical, it is habitual. Then the crying spells, because we have done it in the past, it is again habitual and mechanical. This is known as the tamasic guna. Why tamasic? Tamasic means darkness. Darkness represents ignorance or you can say incomplete knowledge. So what happens when the mind is dominated by this guna at a particular time, it opposes the right thinking, it opposes the right knowledge. My mood is upset. Say for example, it never happens now, but my moon is upset and you called me and I said hell with you. So now see that who is responsible? It is the habitual and the instinctive mind is responsible for my mood upset. Because you simply called me. What problem you created? No problem because it opposes the awareness. It opposes the right knowledge. It opposes the right thinking. What you have to do if even if my mood is upset? Look at this, understand this. And that understanding will go up when you ask those questions to your mind. Your mood is upset, thank you very much. 
let me ask you why your mood is upset. Our mind will start in the second option. What the second option the mind chooses? It starts running. It has a crying spell. It is excited. It reacts and it says, now my life is hell and you are running here and there. That is what we say, Rajsik Guna. That is the second Guna. But it is better than the previous one, the Tamsik Guna. If you don't understand, send an email and I'll make it you. I'll make it more easier. So by doing something that is crazy, we start doing something crazy. What you should do? Oh mind, my master says, oh mind, be at peace. So you, with eyes closed, you see the peace behind that hesitation, behind that mood upset, behind the habitual and the reactive mind. Oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. Why? For real self, for making the entire life a celebration. I'm not sticking to any thought because the mind cannot remain with a single thought forever. What remains forever in the mind? Permanent peace. Why? Real self is of the nature of permanent peace and happiness, love and wisdom. Just say to the mind. Say to the mind. When the mind is moving habitually, mechanically, it is excited, it is hesitated, it is angry, it is upset because of the past event. Just with eyes closed. Oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. My master. My mantra, my master did not tell me that it's a great mantra, but he always used to say that. And I said, wow. And I realized it after many years. Oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. So that is first. What should we do? It will stop by listening, learning and contemplation of the previous talks in which I talk about the principles. So when you say, O oh mind, be at peace, this will also pass, you raise your level of awareness and now you are increasing the sattvic guna in the mind and that sattvic guna in the mind represents what it represents? It represents knowledge and the joy. So when there is a right knowledge, the mind says, I'm in joy, I'm in peace, I'm in calmness. Let us go a little deeper now. Look at this body. Find out now we are entering into meditation without doing it. Look at the body, its shape, size, beauty, point of wisdom. We are entering into the point of wisdom. One day the body was born, it is growing, it is becoming older and older. Sometime it is healthy, other times it becomes sick. And one day this body will die. The body will return from where it has come. The body, essential constituents of the body is matter. Whether you are eating pasta, whether you are non-vegetarian, whether you are vegan, it is all coming from the earth. Earth is nothing but the matter. And it is a natural law. Whatever the object, from where it is created, it has to be dissolved there. In deep sleep, body is not there. How can I say I am the body? I become nobody. What is meditation? I recognize I am somebody. I am stressed. I am somebody. 
I am remembering the past. I am somebody. So what happens when you go into meditation? You transcend the body. You become nobody. And when you awaken to yourself, to the real self, you become everybody. You see the same permanent peace and happiness everywhere. Oh, it seems little higher principle, but not a big deal for you to understand. So now see waking state, body is constantly running, working like a machine. It listens to your mind, work, work, work. In dreaming and in sleep, there is nobody. In mindfulness, you have a right perception about this body. What you discover that you are not this physical body. You awaken that you are different from the body. First, you become the body. You drop the identification with the body. And it is exactly the same way you park the car outside, you move inside the home. Doesn't mean you live constantly live with the body. But at the same time, you are fully aware I'm not the body. So the past impression drops. Simple teaching of my master. Oh, mind, be at peace. This will also pass. Why for real self? We're making the entire life a celebration. Nothing remains in the mind forever. Only what is permanent remains forever, which is real self. And if I stick to a particular thought, feeling, event, then the mind repeats it again. And the recording continues at the subconscious level of which I'm not aware. And it accumulates. It becomes a saving account. And then the when you are living unconsciously and habitually, then what happens? Saving account is broken by the mind and the mind triggers the same impression. And then you say, no, what should I do? Do nothing. Oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. Breath is the life. Life is breath. That is what we say. Right? Further, we say that this breath contains the life force, energy, that is known as prana. Now just ask the question, is the life force or the prana in both of us, in all of us, or and in the um, in the insect or in the elephant are different. Life force is the same. Life force living in six feet body. Life force living in a tiger. Life force living in a fox. Life force living in a monkey is the same. And one day the same life force leaves this body. The body of the monkey and the elephant and etc. etc. Life force is same. The way the electricity expresses itself is light in the bulb, air in the fan, coolness in the air conditioner. The sound in the bell, it does not mean that life force is different. Electricity is the same in fan, in heater, in cooler, in my smartphone, in bulb, in car, and all the machines. So when I think, I am thinking, I am in stress. Life force comes and it gives momentum. When I am habitual, when I am not aware, when I am not alert and attentive, when tamasic guna dominates me, 
what is tamasic guna it opposes no right knowledge simple i am stress what is right knowledge peace is my essential nature no but i am in stress you know i heard that event in the past what should i do in the future worries the life force is giving momentum to the mind with this thought oh my be at peace this will also pass because thought does not remain forever in the mind i am stressed is a thought what remains forever is the real self and the thought that i give momentum the fuel and the, what is that fuel is the life force oh mind be at peace this will also pass for real self for making the entire life a celebration mind i know your nature now a thought of being upset boredom loneliness has come now it will also go away let me watch let me not attach to it let me not give a momentum to it by the life force how listening reminding this only what is permanent remains forever real self cannot be undone because mind works because of the real self why i said say first is the real self and then the mind is or you can say the real self created the mind and entered there mind is the same in all beings third if we think that the tiger has a mind that mind and our mind is are the same what happens that mind does not have an intellect an extra instrument to think to make a choice we have that so we put the tiger into case we separate first oh tiger is ferocious it is going to kill me so i think i separate and i said now i can take over you you drive home you reach to your car we have that intellect we separate our car from we separate our house from the neighbor while eating with a fork and the spoon we put the food into our mouth but if we are unconscious sometime it goes on to our nose we separate i am upset separate past thought has come separate my mood is upset separate boredom separate loneliness separate why none of them is you the mind what it has recorded in the past is retrieving it it has broken the saving account now why this mind is still causing the problem let us go deeper where is the problem in the mind why the mind you are recording all this stuff and then you trigger with the thought then feeling then then sensation then crying spell then anger then agitation and my life becomes a mess it is because of the mind but why where is the problem
because the mind is searching something outside. But why the mind is searching something outside? Because I feel the sense of incompleteness. Why I feel the sense of incompleteness? Because I am seeking peace and happiness, love and wisdom from others. And that process in the mind starts. Then it wants to get attached to a person or a thing or an object or an event in the past. So that sense of incompleteness forces me to think of relating to anything in the past or any relationship. Mind wants to possess, wants to own, wants to dictate for the sake of pleasure. But pleasure and happiness is not outside. That is the reason we create, we want to create a lot of wealth, happiness, projection. We want to create a relationship, projection, happiness. We want to possess lot of things, happiness. We want to eat lot of stuff. Every time I want to change the taste so that I continue to have the happiness. Food means eat to live or live to eat. Doesn't mean that we should not have a choice. Are you getting it? So first, I am enjoying different variety of food. I accumulated lot of wealth. No doubt in accumulating the wealth. But if the wealth is accumulated and the mind wants to secure happiness with that, it will not happen. So that sense of relationship needs to be broken. Why not? We should earn wealth. We should relate to everyone in peace and happiness. Why should I relate seeking and expecting peace and happiness from others? Are you sure that the other guy lives in permanent peace and happiness and he is born with that peace and happiness? So once we have everything, then I have a fear of losing them and the fear breeds anger and the greed. That begins with the desire. If the desire is fulfilled, causes repetition of the same desire, that is what is greed. Desire unfulfilled causes anger. Desire, fear, greed, anger causes delusion. Delusion causes ego, pride. Pride causes an extreme identification with the body, which is not me. Then what happens? I only suffer, I only suffer, I only suffer. So when we say meditation, when we say practice, when we say mindfulness, is a right perception in right action. It is right perception and right action. So right perception and right action. What is then mind? Our great master and including even the great philosophers in the West, they say mind, man is a mental being. We talk a monkey mind. So that monkey is also there inside us as mind. And the master says that manushya, we say in Sanskrit manushya, 
mind you see that mind and manushya so we say manushya is a mental being why we say animals as animal being they are guided by the four instincts when we say mind is mental being we are guided by those four instincts plus thoughts feeling sensation ideas past present future that is what the mental being is i am teaching mental being you are listening mental being boredom mental being despair mental being frustration mental being <laughs> just recognize that just recognize become oh mental being boredom thank you mind i am happy inside you continue to be bored then the mind brings a thought of loneliness thank you who is not lo- alone in this world can anyone die with me so mind is a man mind means man is a mental being so what is the point of wisdom but the real self is beyond the mind and that you have experienced not once but hundred of times by regular practice that you did and you shared your experiences with me why don't you remind that oh mind be at peace this will also pass let us go a little deeper human mind leads everything and does everything knowledge rationality habit violence goodness badness sensation action movement stress suffering pleasure grief crying all belongs to the mind if the mind does not exist all these will not exist so next question comes uh, can we ask that question that if let my mind does not exist what will happen no experience at all no thinking at all not possible so master says mind is a necessary evil we have to make it pure followed by the right thinking the mind asks to go to the past compare in the present project the pleasure in the future why not mind listen to us why not we say goodbye to the past live in the present without comparison and free from the worries in the future this can only happen when we discover our real self we remove the ignorance in the mind then the we become the master of the mind this is what we have been doing it this is what we need to do should do must do my master used to say oh mind be at peace this will also pass what will pass what the mind is thinking being crazy despair delusional grief the mind does not contain anything forever except the real self all desires passions stress stress related problems cravings goodness purity violence evils virtues all are related to this mind mind is my instrument but the mind has become my master oh mind be at peace this will also pass mind is like a car hold on i have stopped you even if you continue la you continue 
आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू सपोर्ट यू मैन यूज इज दैम वी यूज दिस वन वी यूज दिस माइंड विदाउट नोइंग इट क्लियरली without understanding this proper instruments we are uh, we have never educated this mind the way we educated the mind the rules of the road in the skill set of the driving to drive our car on the highway we have never that is what we are learning what we are learning we are educating the mind to know the rules to live our life and to keep this mind in the highest state of consciousness that pulsates with permanent peace and happiness we are understanding the mind i you we they he she are many expressions they belong to the mind without mind i cannot express this we know many functions of the mind we know many powers of the mind we know many actions of the mind it is a software we know many attitude of the mind we know the movement of the mind but we do not know what this mind is to know the mind is to purify the mind one and to know the mind is to not only to purify the mind to but to find the real self that is what we have been doing mind is created when the matter interacts with our real self or the matter interacts with the consciousness or when what i am not interacts with i am i am talking to you the mind is there i you interaction mind is there choice is with us whether it is good mind peaceful mind or not that's a different thing first thing we are understanding that the world or you and you the moment interaction begins the mind is created question is how the mind is interacting mind is over master so it is interacting the way it likes with despair frustration stress anxiety my master used to say oh mind be at peace this will also be it gives me a very deeper sense of calmness the moment i say within me why mind you cannot stick to any thought if i don't if i am not attached if i am attached then mind will return to the same thought o oh mind be at peace this will also pass why because behind the it behind you there is a real self is of the permanent nature so mind i can understand i understand that you can only keep the attributes of the real self if i am not attached if i am not seeking anything from the world in terms of happiness love and the wisdom because they are within me so the mind is interaction see the craziness of the mind now what i just talked 
what the mind say it is past what i am talking is the present now it has become the past and you are your mind is waiting for what i am going to say in the future can you really divide past present and the future can we really divide but this crazy mind divides it it is indivisible it divides it and then it says it happened in the past now i am in the present let me retrieve the past in the present and let me suffer mind 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 claims and owns the past causes regret claims present and compare causes future leads to worries and it is all happening by thinking by thoughts it brings us to the most beautiful understanding that if the mind is full of thoughts thought is nothing but belongs to thinking so there is a right thinking and there is a wrong thinking there is a right thinking in the mind there is a wrong thinking one thinking leads to problem and other leads to peace we need to think but thinking should be right what is right thinking that is good that is right and good what is right that brings mind back to the real self what that means what is right thinking that helps to discover peace and happiness that separates me from all the rest of the crazy thoughts wrong thinking is disease is illness and the right thinking is medicine <laughs> are you getting it wrong thinking is sickness right thinking is medicine i am repeating again right thinking is vaccine wrong thinking is covid 19 you see medicine to disease change my thought versus change my environment condition people do you see that i will divorce you wrong thinking first i will change my thought before i take a decision to change my honey wrong thinking is always pointing to the past and the future wrong thinking is always pointing to the others thinking simply means our habit personality speech action that is already accumulated which i just explained to you so where lies the problem problem is not in relationship with the world outside problem is in my head with the incomplete knowledge that causes because it is repeating itself there is no past present in the future but the mind has created that sense of identity and that identity brings the identity crisis i have seen 
understood that lot of people commit suicide. They live in despair and frustration. Lot of mental challenges because of the wrong thinking. So Eastern wisdom, our master says, thinking is thinking. Let us start thinking in align with these principles. Identity crisis. I do not know who I am. I do not know who I am, but I claim I am the body. But I just explained this body is matter, it belongs to the matter, it will go to the matter, birth, growth, maturity, sickness, health, and ultimately goodbye. How can I be the body? So first I become the body without clarity. I am the body. Identity crisis. First identity crisis in our life. First I become the body, then I become the husband, wife, employee, employer, son, daughter. See that? Without claiming that I am the body, I cannot be the brother, sister, son, daughter, wife, husband, honey. No way. That is our second identity crisis. It is like water in the mirrors. It is like the wave claims I am. Water claims I am the wave. No way. You are simply water. We are simply our real self. We are peace and happiness, love and wisdom. We are not the body. We are pure consciousness. That is why my master says, O oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. Why they will pass? That is the nature of the mind. If I do not interfere, if I do not create past, present and future, if I do not trigger my past habit, event, incident, in the form of thought. So identity crisis, first I claim I am the body. After that, I relate myself to the world outside. That is why we are undertaking a journey of the self-discovery. Self-discovery to find out to remove the wrong notion. O oh mind, be at peace. This will also pass. I am aware the thoughts are coming and going. This will also pass. Good, bad, high, low thoughts. G what is left is the real self. The mind can only remain permanently with the real self. Why not help the mind to live with that real self of permanent peace and happiness, love and wisdom? Thank you. We'll continue with it.